Hi there guys, Tom Quayle here. Hope you're all doing very well indeed as ever. Today I'm doing a relatively short video just to show you this brand new pedal from the guys at Black Country Customs of Laney Amplification. This is a new pedal that's being launched for NAM and it's called the Difference Engine. Now the Difference Engine is essentially a delay pedal with three different delay modes on board. So the first is an analog tape style delay. It's based on a Roland Space Echo or Chorus Echo I should say, RE501 and it totally nails that sound. Then we've got two digital delays, a standard TC2290 style digital delay, and then a dynamic ducking delay, also based on that same famous unit. There's a ton of control on here, a ton of power, thanks to a Shark DSP unit, but unlike a lot of other delay pedals on the market, it won't cost you a fortune, and you can power it from a standard nine volt center negative DC input because it only requires 100 milliamps of power. So what I want to do today is just give you some really quick sounds, a kind of overview of the pedal. And then what I'm going to do later on is after we've got sort of NAM out of the way, I'm going to do a more in-depth demo for you guys with various different sounds and really deep dive into this thing. So essentially on the front panel here, we've got a color, mix, tone, and a repeats knob uh, that allow you to dial you know, sounds in very, very quickly using an analog style control setup. But under the hood, this is all completely digital. We've then got this center dial here, which allows you to dial in the speed of the tape for the tape echo, or dial in the exact milliseconds or BPM for your digital delays. So that's really, really nice. It's a stereo pedal, so you've got stereo operation in terms of controlling the left and right sides of the signal separately, so you can have separate delay times or separate um, tape speeds, for example. You can change the phase of both the left and right settings. So you can really get those 80s style Steve Lukather, kind of Mike Landau style uh, lead sounds if you want to from this pedal. We've also got a couple of buttons just here that enable you to deep dive into the menu system if you want to, and also to change the mode of the pedal. So in the mode that we're in now, the preset mode, you can see that written just at the top here on the OLED screen, which by the way, if that's flickering at all on camera, that is just the frame rate of the camera. Don't worry too much about that. It doesn't flicker in real life when you're actually using the pedal. So that's not gonna be a problem for you. But yeah, you can see we're in preset mode just here. Preset mode, the foot switches control the presets in terms of moving up and down between those. So down and up through those presets. Hold the button down, it will move quickly between the presets. And then if we're in live mode, if we press the button here, you can see live mode. We've then got our bypass here, and then we've got tap tempo if we just tap the button. Then if we hold the button, we can go into a hold mode, which will freeze our sound so we can play over the top of it. Really, really nice. Deep diving into the menu is dead easy. Just hit the menu button here, and then you've got all of the different menus that you'd want to use to edit your sounds, of which, you know, the process is dead simple. I didn't need to read a manual at all to use this pedal. Here's all of your options. You can see the different modes. We've got time, tape, uh, mix, repeat, so on and so forth, modulation. There's even a compressor and boost built in there so you can emulate the sounds of driving the preamp of a tape unit, for example, or the input stage of one of these kind of rack mount delay units. So that's also very, very cool. So let's come out of the menu and let's have a listen to it. At the moment, I'm in the analog mode. I've got my tape speed set fairly slow, so quite a long delay. And one of the really nice things is we can change and alter the wow and flutter independently. So we've got wow and flutter rate and depth. So I've cranked those fairly high and I've got quite a lot of modulation. And you're gonna hear exactly how well this kind of mixes with my original tone and the lovely lush modulation that I'm getting here. So there's nothing else in the signal path except this delay and a tiny bit of room reverb at the end of the signal, and we get this. So beautiful sounding analog delays. They've really nailed that tape sound really, really well. If I just let this sit now and let you hear the sound of the delay afterwards. That is a really sweet sounding modulation. It's very, very tape-like in its nature. If you've ever used the 501 or even the original Space Echo, the 501 in particular because of the chorus sound that it would generate, that's really, really close. They've worked for hours and hours getting this to sound right. Now, if you crank the repeats here to about 40%, it starts to get into controlled self-oscillation territory. So you get this beautiful sustain from the delays, which I'll show you now. <laughs> Thank you. 
Just like you'd expect for a tape echo, you can do all sorts of crazy things with the sound once you've got into that sustaining oscillation territory. So it's a beautiful sound. So they've absolutely nailed the sound of the actual tape echo itself. If we increase the color here for even wilder sounds and then shorten the delay even more. Now, one of the really nice things about this is that there's a cursor that appears underneath the digits here but you can move that cursor around to do larger edits. So for example, there I'm on the seven and I can change there. You can hopefully see, it's a bit difficult because my fingers are in the way, but you can see that you can edit the larger numbers as well. So you're not having to dial through quite so slowly, which is quite nice. So let's increase the speed of the tape a little bit further. We'll go up to 80 here and have a listen to this. <laughs> As far as tape echoes go, that to me is super authentic sounding. I'm really, really impressed with that. I think it sounds great. If we increase the repeats, you can hear we start to get into that kind of authentic kind of self-feedback or self-oscillation territory really, really nicely. So they totally nailed that sound for me, which is wonderful. Now, if we go in to edit here, push down on the menu, when we change our type or our mode, let's go for, instead of the analog, let's go for the digital delay. So in this case, we're sorry, I've gone for the dynamic delay there. Let's go for the digital. Okay, now in this instance, we've got very pristine, clean delays. So let's go into our time here. Again, we could do this from the front panel, or we could do this from the menu here. Again, we've got totally separate left and right times. I'm gonna link those here. So we'll come back out again, so the link is on. Let's go to time left. Okay, now again, I can move my cursor further across here and start to dial in faster, uh, sorry, uh, longer delay times. Let's go for 501, okay. So, those are now linked. Okay, so there's our digital delay, much cleaner sounding. Let's take out the modulation here. Again, really wonderful sounding delay, super pristine and clean. Now using our tone here, we can dial out some of that high end for a darker sounding delay. Still it's gonna be much brighter than the analog delay, of course. But now it's sitting back in the mix a lot more. fantastic sounding delay unit. You know, I'm so impressed with it. If we bring the colour in here, there's our beautiful TC2290 style modulation. It's a wonderful sounding delay. We do have a few other options in here as well. If we go to edit here, we've got multi-head, so we can set up multi-head delays on here as well. And then all of our standard controls. And if we go into the routing options here, you can see we can control the left and right sides independently in terms of the mix as well and the phase. So we can change up and say, for instance, do a kill 
uh, kill dry in the left signal and then we could have the wet in the right and do a wet dry setup. And if we come over to the routing here, the mode, you can see we've got stereo, cross feedback, ping pong, mono, wet dry. So there's a bunch of different options here in terms of the routing, very similar to a rack unit that you might have found in the 80s in a kind of the edges setup, you know, or as I say, Steve Luke at the Mike Landau. So it's a fantastic sounding unit, really, really intuitive and easy to use. Once you set your preset up and you want to save it, dead easy, come in here, just go to preset and then hit save. You can name it whatever you want and then it's done, simple as that. So again, in terms of the use of this, considering what's available here and how much sort of scope there is for tonal uh, sculpting, if you like, it's a very, very simple unit to use. So there we go, guys. That is the difference engine from the guys at Black Country Customs of Laney Amplification. Again, it's launched at NAMM this year, so click the link in the description below and you will find uh, the website where you can check out more details and, of course, get yourself down to your local dealer and you can purchase one for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, guys, make sure you click the like and subscribe buttons below and, of course, hit the bell notification icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload new content. Of course, check out my brand new guitar as well, the Ibanez TQMS1 that's also been launched at NAMM. My name's Tom Quayle and I will see you all in the next video. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye.